Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 871, minimum number of refueling stops. Before we read the question prompt, I would just like to kindly ask you to subscribe. I have the goal of reaching 1,000 subscribers by the end of May, and I need your help to get there. The more subscribers I have, the more videos I can make, and the easier I can make it for you to get into Fang. So please subscribe, it helps everyone. Now, let's read the question prompt. A car travels from a starting position to a destination which is target miles east of the starting position. There are gas stations along the way. The gas stations are represented as an array of stations where stations of I equals positions of I. Fuel I indicates that the ith gas station is position I miles east of the starting location and has fuel I liters of gas. The car starts with an infinite tank of gas, which initially has start fuel liters of fuel in it. It uses one liter of gas per mile that it drives. When the car reaches a gas station, it may stop and refuel, transferring all the gas from the station into the car. Return the minimum number of refueling stops that the car must take in order to reach its destination. If it cannot reach the destination, return minus one. Note that if the car reaches a gas station with zero fuel left, the car can still refuel there. If the car reaches the destination with zero fuel left, sorry, yeah, if it reaches the target destination with zero fuel left, it is considered to have arrived. So, how can we do this? Let's look at an example and then we can think about what algorithm we want to use. Okay, so we read the question prompt. Now, let's figure out what a solution might be. So we have this problem where we're given that a target is 100 miles away. We've started with 10 liters of fuel and we have stations where the first station is 10 miles away or 10, yeah, I guess it is miles and it has 60 liters of fuel. The next station is 20 miles away and it has 30 liters of fuel. The next station is 30 miles away and this is 30 miles from the start point, not from the last one. Um, and then the last station has 60 uh, miles away from the start and it has 40 liters of gas. So <clears throat> what can we do here? Well, we start, you know, say at this is where our start is. Uh, so this is really like zero and then we're going to end here at 100. So what we can do is we know that there's a gas station here at 10. There's a gas station here at 20. There's a gas station here at 30 and we'll say one here at 60. <clears throat> so we use our 10 liters of start fuel and we arrive at the first gas station at this point you know we'll, we started with 10 liters of fuel but we used 10 liters to get to that first station so we have to fill up here so we're going to take all of the gas here so now we're going to have 60 liters and what is this going to do obviously we can't reach 100 because we would need still 90 to go so at some point we need to fuel up so that means that essentially what we can do is we can go all the way over to the 60, which is going to consume 50 liters of gas. So we'll be left with 10. And then to get the last 40, what we need to do is we need to fuel up at the 60, get its 40 liters of gas. So we'll get 40 extra. We'll now have 50 and we can arrive at our 100 and we'll be good. So essentially we'll have fueled up twice. We fueled up at this 10 and we fueled up at this 60. So that would give us a total of two, and that's what we expect for this one. So how might we actually solve this? Well, in the real world, you can't go back and refuel after you've you know passed the gas station if you're already out of gas. You know, theoretically, if you still had gas, you could kind of go back to the gas station. But in this example, um, we're gonna get to a point and we run out of gas, so we can't go back. But since this is a leak code problem and not real life, what we can actually do is we're going to use a greedy approach here. And we're going to try to go as far right as possible and hope that we can reach the end with our current amount of gas that we have. And if we ever hit a point where we actually are out of gas completely, well, we don't have to worry. What we can actually do is we can just keep track of the largest you know, gas stations that we've seen so far and we're going to pretend as if we had fueled up there. So we'll just take them in a greedy manner. So we'll try to go as far right as possible greedily. And if we find out that we can't do it, then what we want to do is essentially just pretend like we had fueled up there and then continue pretending like we had. 
So basically we'll just exhaust um, our fuel ups as we go and we'll take them kind of like in a greedy manner. And the data structure that we're gonna wanna use here is actually gonna be a heap. And the reason that we're gonna use a heap is that way we can have access in constant time to the largest gas station in terms of you know liters of fuel that it has uh, so we can take it greedily. So for example, what we want to do is let's build a max heap, right? So we'll call this uh, heap and it's initially going to be, you know, initialized to I guess an empty heap. So what we want to do is we want to go through our, you know, uh, I guess input here from left to right. And what we want to do is we want to, you know, basically see how much of our tank it would cost to get to the next station. So we start at zero and to get to the first station, it's obviously going to take 10 miles. So our tank, which is starting at 10, we're going to use 10. So we minus 10, we'll have zero. So at this point, um, since we have zero, but we're also at a station, what we can do is actually just refuel there. So we can take the 60 and continue. So in this case, we actually don't need to add anything to the heap because we got to a station, we were able to refuel there. The only time we want to look into the heap is actually when we're between stations and we should have refueled at uh, some point in the past. So now we're here and we've gotten 60. So we get to this station and we don't need to refuel yet because getting to 20 would have taken you know only 10 liters of fuel. So we have 50 left. But remember, we want to keep track of all the gas stations that we've passed because we want to, in the case that we need gas, go back. So we're going to add it to the heap and say that we had the option to take 20, but we didn't. So now we go to the next gas station and essentially we're just iterating over all the gas stations here. So we get to the next one and we see that it was only 10 miles from the last one. So that means we use 10 liters of fuel and we're still good on fuel. We haven't run out. So we can refuel here if we want, but again, we're doing this in a greedy manner. So we're just going to try to go as far right as possible. But we can also add to our heap the fact that we've seen a gas station with 30 liters. So obviously, when we try to add 30 to this heap, it's a max heap. So the 30 is going to come first because obviously the top of the heap is always going to be the largest element. So now we have 30 and 20 in our heap. Now what we do is we get to this uh, 60 gas station which was 30 from the last one. So we'll use another 30 here and we'll be left with 10 liters of fuel. So we're still good on fuel. We haven't had to refuel yet. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to add this 60 because it's an option for us to take for refueling, but we don't need it yet. Remember, we're doing things greedily. So we need to add the 60 to our heap in case we ever run out of fuel. So when we add it to the heap, obviously it's going to be the new biggest element. So we can consider it as 30, uh, sorry, 60, 30, 20. And then we go and remember we have 10 liters of fuel. So we're going to end up here at 70, right? And at this point, we're going to have zero liters of fuel left and we're not at the end, right? We still have a gap of 30 to the next station. So at this point, this is when we start needing to go into the heap. So we can see, okay, if we had refueled at you know the biggest gas station that we've seen, would we have enough fuel? So basically, is zero plus 60, is that greater than the distance that we still have to travel? 30, yes. So essentially, if we had fueled up at 60, then we would have enough fuel in total to make our journey. So we basically just exhaust the 60 and then append that to the total number of fuel, up, fuel ups that we've had. Remember, we had to do the initial one at 10 because we got there with zero gas because it took us 10 to get there. And then this is our second fuel up that we should have done at 60. So this is kind of how we're doing it, like traveling back in time. Um, although, you know, in real life you can't do this, but this is a leak code problem. So that's how uh, we do it. And then obviously if we had fueled up there, then we would have, what is that? So it, we would still have 30 left and we obviously reach the end with gas in our tank, so we've reached our destination. So that's essentially how we want to do the problem. Of course, this explanation is a little bit hand wavy, but once we go into the code editor, it's actually really simple. I think it's only about 15 lines of code and it's super easy. Essentially what we want to do is just iterate over the stations, build that heap. If we need to look into it because our, I guess, fuel is ever at any point negative, then we just start popping from the heap um, until either the heap runs out, in which case, um, 
if we're still negative after the heap has run out, that means it's actually impossible to reach the end, or we'll have gotten enough fuel to actually reach the end, in which case we're good. So that being said, let's actually go to the code editor, write this out. I'll explain it line by line, and it should be really clear. This is a hard level problem, but to be honest, I think that once you kind of see the solution, it's more of a medium. I think probably coming up with this on your own is hard, but once you've seen it, it's, it's not that bad. So I'll see you in the editor. We are in the editor and it's time to write the code. So let us define our heap. And here we're going to be just using a standard min heap, but we're going to use negative values to get a max heap property. Uh, the reason that I'm doing this is because Python's max heap API is really confusing. I don't remember the method names and we can get a min heap by just using negative values. Sorry, we can get a max heap by using a min heap with negative values. So let's set that up. So we'll say heap is just going to be an empty list to start. And remember that we're always backwards looking in terms of how far we were from the last station and whether or not we were able to account for you know the distance uh, traveled and how much gas we have. The, uh, the reason I say this is because we actually need to modify our input here to take account for, I guess, the distance between whatever the last station is and our target. And the reason that we need to do that is because we need to do some processing uh, on the last one to make sure that we actually had enough fuel from the last station to wherever um, we need to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to say stations dot append. Uh, and we're gonna append to it basically the target destination. I'm oh, sorry, this should be a list. Uh, target and just some arbitrary value. So we'll just say float infinity. It doesn't really matter what we choose here, but essentially what we wanna do is just add that in there so we can pretend like the last, uh, like the target is actually a station and remember that we're processing all the stations here so we need to do that final processing uh, if you don't believe me that we need this uh, i suggest removing this from the final solution submit your code and you'll see an example of why it doesn't work if you don't have this so we actually do need this line so what we need to do is we need to keep track of basically how many refuels we have right because that's what we're actually doing here so we're going to say refuels is going to be equal to zero and we also need to keep track of the previous um, gas station that we were so we can calculate the distance between our current gas station and the previous to figure out how far we've actually traveled. So let's say previous is also going to equal to zero. And now we need to iterate through our stations like we did before. So we're going to say for, I guess, the location of the station and the capacity that it has uh in terms of liters in stations right because that's how it's given to us right position i fuel of i um we're going to say okay well the amount of fuel it took to get here from the last station is going to be what it's going to be our tank minus you know our current location uh location minus whatever the previous one was remember that locations are given in um, I guess miles from the start, not miles from the last station. So that's why we need to basically have this minus prev to account for the fact that um, the distance is given from the start, not from the last station. So we need to normalize that distance. So we're going to subtract the fuel that we've used here. And now what we need to do is essentially if our fuel is negative, that means that we should have refueled somewhere in the past and we didn't. Remember, we're doing this in a greedy manner. We're kind of just going as far right as possible. If at every point we run out of gas, then that means that we should have refueled in the past. So we need to look into our heap and try to get fuel from those past stations that we were at. So we're gonna say while heap, so while we have something to pull out of the heap and the tank is negative so essentially when we don't have gas we need to pull things out right so we're going to add to our tank whatever's at the top of the heap so remember that we're putting into our heap minus values we now need to undo the negative so we're going to say minus heap q dot heap pop so we're going to pop whatever's at the top of the heap and we're going to add the negative of it to i guess negate the negative that we put it in the heap in the first place and if we had to do this, that means that we had to take a refuel, right? Doing this indicates that we've refueled somewhere. So we're going to say refuels, we're going to do plus equal to one, and now we can continue. 
And essentially what we're gonna do here is we're gonna keep doing this until either our tank is now greater than zero, which means that we can continue going forward, or our heap is actually out of gas stations that we could have refueled at. And now what we need to do is we need to say if tank, tank is less than zero, then we're simply gonna return minus one because it's not possible to reach the end. If we get to this if tank less than zero, that means that we must have gone through the entirety of our heap and the tank is still less than zero, which means that there's no possible way, even if we refueled at every single stop, it wouldn't matter, we don't have enough fuel. So that's why we return minus one here. Now what we wanna do at this point uh, if we get to this point, then we know that we can actually continue going forward. So we need to add our um, station to the actual um, uh, heap. So we don't actually process it now, we're gonna process it in the future if we need it. So we're gonna say heap heap push. So we're gonna push onto the heap and remember we're using a min heap here as a max heap. So we need to put values uh, in as negative. So we're gonna say minus capacity. Uh, and then remember that we need to keep track of our previous location so we can do that nice normalization of the distance. So we're gonna say prev is just gonna be equal to our current location. And that's all we have to do. Either we're gonna return minus one here or we can actually reach the final station and you know it'll have taken some number of refuels and all we need to do is simply return the answer here. So refuels. Cool, so let us just double check. We haven't made any but tank. Oh, God damn it, it's called start fuel. Uh, let's see, tank, so this is start, start fuel, start fuel, uh, start fuel, sorry about that. Okay, I guess that's why we, uh... okay, cool. That's fine, and let's submit this. Tank is not the, oh, God, leak code, why do you, okay. Yeah, they've changed it since, <clears throat> since the last time we did this. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so we finally got to work after some stupid naming bugs by leak code. Anyway, the code was fine, just the variable names were a little bit off. So what is the time and space complexity for this algorithm? Well, we're using a heap here and typically heaps are, I guess, um, n log k, where k is the size of the heap and in this problem, we can, if we don't actually need to refuel anywhere, let's just say that our start fuel will actually take us to our target, um, then we don't actually need to uh, you know, pop anything from the heap, but we're gonna have to put everything into the heap because we won't actually you know, process any popping of the heap, but we'll still have to populate it at each time. Um, so essentially what this means is that we're going to do n times you know log n uh, operations so we're gonna you know for every basically station that we have we're gonna have to put it into our uh, heap here so that's why our space complexity is going to be big O of n log n because uh, essentially we would just be putting all of the elements into our heap in the worst case um, actually I think in every case we're gonna have to do that so what is the space complexity? Obviously a heap is just gonna be big O of N, uh, you know, in the case that we put every single element in there. So that's gonna be your time and space complexity uh, for this problem. Like I said, once you see the solution for this, it's actually really intuitive and makes a lot of sense. I think that it may be a little bit tricky to figure out that you can just do it greedily and just, you know, take um, fill-ups retroactively. Um, but once you've seen this once, to be honest, uh, this is not really one that you're going to forget or you're going to be confused about. I think once you've seen it, to be honest, like after you watch this video, if you get this question, you should be able to just blow through it because you'll already know the trick to it. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully, if, you know, if you get this on like a Google interview or whoever is asking this these days, um, you'll be able to just blow through it. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If there's any videos you'd like me to make, please just leave them in the comment section below, and I'll be happy to get back to you guys. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you find this helpful, and have a nice day. Bye.